Hare Krishna, dear devotees. On behalf of Srila Prabhupada and Iskama Talanda, I would like to welcome all of you for this wonderful series on Deliverance of Putra from Srimad Bhagavatam. We are very grateful for Iskama Talanda for all of you joining from world over to listen to this wonderful katha from His Grace Amrinda Das. We have been going deeper and deeper every day by hearing this very, very wonderful katha that is being narrated. I'm sure you all are having a wonderful time and you all have so far so good experience. So today we have to stop at 8.30 sharp in, in one hour. So we'll begin katha very immediately. And tomorrow we'll have a Q&A session. So if you have any questions, you may please send it to pariprashna108 at gmail.com. So without further ado, I request his guest Amrana Prabhu to begin today's Katha. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Oma Jnana Timirandha Siddhyana Anjana Shalake Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadama Hiyam Dadati Swapadantikam Namao Mishnupada Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasuti Deve Gauravani Prasharani Nirvishishashun Nivadi Paschati Deshatarani Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shri Dwaiti Kadadar Shri Vasari Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Welcome everyone, Hare Krishna. Let us start chanting the verses from the sixth chapter of the tenth canto. The context of Putana Moksha, Putana Uddhar. Canto 10, chapter 6, the killing of the demon Putana. Shri Shukha Uvacha, Nandaha Pativacha Shaure, Nam Risheti Vichintayan. Harim Jagam Sharanam Utpata Gama Shankitaha Kamsena Prahita Ghora Putana Balaghatini Shishum Shara Nignanti Pura Gram of Rajadishu Nayatra Shravanadini Rakshognani Swakarmasu Kurvanti Satvatam Hartur Yatudhanya Chatrahi Sake Chari Ekadot Patti Putanan and the Gopulam Yoshitwa Maya Yatmanam Pravishat Kama Charini Tam Kesha Bandha Vyatishakta Mallika Brihan Nitam Bastana Kritra Madhyamam Suvasa Samkal Pitakarana Bhushana Twisho Lasat Kuntala Manditana Nam Valgusmita Panga Visarga Vikshitair Mano Harantim Banitam Rajokasam Amam Satam Bhoja Karena Rupinim Gopya Shri Adrashtumivaga Tampatim Balagrahas Tatra Vichinvati Shishun Yadrichayananda Grihe Sadantakam Balam Pratichana Nijoru Tejasam Dadar Shatal Peg Nimivahitam Hasi Vibuddha Tam Balakamarika Graham Chara Charatma Sanimi Litekshanaha Anantamaro Payadankamantakam Yathoru Gam Suptama Buddhira Judihi Tam Tikshna Chittam Ativama Cheshtitam Viksham Tara Kosha Parichara Sivad Varastriam Tat Prabhayaja Dharshite Nirikshyamane Janani Yatishtatam Tasminstanam Durjara Virya Mulbanam Ghoram Kamadaya Shishur Dadavatha Gadam Karabhyam Bhagavan Prapidyatat Pranay Samam Rosha Saman Vitopibad Samunja Munja Lamiti Prabhashini Nishpid Yamana Kilajiva Marmani Vivritta Netre Charano Bujo Muhur Praswin Nagatra Kshipati Rurodaha Tasyaswanena Tigabira Ramhasa Sadrir Mahitya Ushachala Sakraha Rasadi Shascha Pratine di Rejana Petu Krita Uvajani Pata Shankaya Nisha Charitam Vyatitastana Vyasur Vyada Yakesham Charano Bhujavapi Prasarya Goshte Nijarupa Mastita Vajra Hato Vritra Iva Patan Ripper Patamano Pitad Dehas Triga Vyut Yantara Druman Churnayamasa Rajendra Mahadasi Tadad Bhutam Isha Matrogra Damstrasyam Girikandara Nasikam Gandashailastanam Raudram Prakirna Runa Murthajam Andhakupa Gavirakshram Pulinaro Havishanam Badhasetu Bhujavangrim Shunyato Yeradutaram Santatrasus Santatrasus Matadviksha Gopa Gopikalevaram Purvam Tutan Niswanita Bhinna Ritkaranamastakaha Balam Chatasya Urasi Kridantam Makuto Bhayam Gopias Turnam Sama Bhetya Jagrahu Jata Sambrama Yashoda Rohini Bhyam Taha Samambalas Sarvataha Raksham Vidadire Samya Gopucha Brahmana Divi Gomutrena Snapa Itwa Punar Gora Jasar Vakam Raksham Chakrusha Shakrita Dwadashangeshu Namabi 
गोप्य संस्पृष्ट सलिला अंगेशु करो पृथक न्यस्यात्मनि अथ बालस्य बीजम बीज न्यासमकुर्वत अव्यादजोंघ्रि मणिमा स्तव जान्वथो यज्ञोच्युत कटितटम जटरम हयास्य हृत्केशवस्तुर ईश इनस्तु कंठम विष्णुर्भुज मुखमुरुक्रम ईश्वर कम चक्रग्रत सह गो हरिस्तु पश्चात्वत्पाशनुरसी मधुहाजन कोणेशु शंख उय उपर्युपेन्द्रस्ता हलधर पुरुष समंता इंद्रिया ऋषिकेश प्राणा नारायण वतु श्वेत द्वीप पतिष्चित मनो योगेश्वरो वतु पृश्नि गर्भस्तु ते बुद्धि आत्मा भगवान्न पर क्रीडंत पा गोविंद शयान पा माधव व्रजत अव्याकुंठ आसीन ताम श्रेयपति भुंजान यज्ञ भुक्पा सर्वग्रह भयंकर डाकिो या तो धान कुंडाइर्भक ग्रह भूत प्रेत पिशाशाश्च यक्षरक्षो विनायक कोटरा रेवती ज्येष्ठा पूतना मतृकाद उन्मादा ये यपस्मारा देह प्राणेन्द्रिय ध्रुह स्वप्न दृष्टा महोत्ता वृद्धा बाला ग्रहश्च ये सर्वे नश्यंतु ते नाम ग्रहण भीरव इति श्रीशुख श्रीशुख उवाच इति प्रणय बद्धा बीर गोपी भी कृतरक्षण पायजिवा स्तन माता संयवेश यदात्मज तवन्नंदाद गोपा मथुराया व्रजम गता विलोक्य पूतना देहम बभूभु अति विस्मता नूनम बतर्षि संजा योगेशो वास सृष्टो युत्पा यदा नकधुंदु कलेवर परशु छिवा ते व्रजौक सह दूरे क्षिप्वा वयवशो न्यतन काष्ट वेष्टित दय्यम से देह से धूमश्चा गुरसौरव उत्थित कृष्ण निरुभुक्त सपद्याहत पापन पूतना लोक बालघ्नी राक्षसेरुधिराशना जिघा सया हर ये स्तनम दत्वापति किं पुन श्रद्धया भक्त कृष्णा परमात्म यछन प्रियतम किं नो रक्तास्तन्मात यथा पद्भ्या भक्तरिधि स्थाभ्या वंद्याभ्या लोकवंदित अंगं यक्रम्य भगवान तत्स्तन या तो धन्यपी सास्वर्गम वाप जननी गति कृष्ण भुक्त स्तन क्षीरा कि मुगारो नु मतर पयांसी यासा बत्पुत्र स्नेहस्नुताल भगवान्वकी पुत्र कैवल्याखिल प्रद तासमत कृष्ण कुरती सुते क्षण न पुनः कल्पते राजन संसारो ज्ञान संभव कटधूम से सौरभ्यम अवग्राह्य व्रजौक सह किमीदुत एवेती वदंतो व्रज मयु ते त्र वर्णित गोपै पूतना गमनाक श्रुवा तधन स्वस्ति शिशोश्चा संसु विस्मता नंदस्वपुत्र प्रेत्यागत मुदारधी मूर्धनी उपाग्राह्य पर मुदम लेभे कुर यूतना मोक्षम कृष्ण सेभकमद्भुत शुणुया श्रद्धया मर्त्यो गोविंदे लभते रति गुरव गौरचंद्राय राधिकाई तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम वंशाकलपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण वेलकम एवरी वन सो टुडे वी आर स्टार्टिंग ऑफ विथ वर्स Thirty-three of the sixth chapter, Canto Ten. I can't believe out of forty-four verses we are done with thirty-two verses. Last twelve verses to go in our series. So we will do. We will start with thirty-three today. Actually, we'll do thirty-three and thirty-four. At least we will start off with that because they are together. So let's read thirty-three first and then thirty-four. कले वर परशु छिवा ते व्रजौ कस दूरे क्षिवा वयवशो न्यदन काष्ट वेष्टि शिल प्रभुपाद ट्रांसलेशन एंड पोर्टपोर्ट ट्रांसलेशन द इनहेबिटेंट्स ऑफ ब्रज कट द जैजेंटिक बॉडी ऑफ पूतना इन टू पीसेस विद द हेल्प ऑफ एक्सेस देन दे थ्रू द पीसेस फॉर अवे कवर्ड देम विद वुड एंड बर्न देम टू एशस हरे कृष्ण पोर्टपोर्ट 
It is the practice that after a snake has been killed, its body is cut into various pieces for fear that it may come to life again simply by interacting with air. Merely killing a serpent is not sufficient. After it is killed, it must be cut to pieces and burnt, and then the danger will be over. Putana resembled a great serpent, and therefore the coward men took the same precautions by burning her body to ashes. So let's see the words in this verse, and then we'll go to the next. Um, so Kalevaram means body. Putana Yaha Kalevaram. It's the body of Putana. Vrajau uh, Kasaha. Vrajau Kasaha refers to the residence of Braja. Uh, o Kasaha means living place. And Vraja, uh, that place which was the living, residing place for the residents, that is Braja. Braja is the residing place for the residents. So Braja U Kasaha refers to those inhabitants for whom the residence was Braja. What did they do? Parashubhi Chitva. We know the word Chitva. Um, in Shastra, we have Asanga Shastrena Dhridena Chitva. We may have heard this. That using the sword of detachment, we should cut the attachment in this world. <laughs> Dhridena, with determination. So chitva means to cut. Hmm? And parashubhi uh, is the bahuvachan prayog of the word parashu. Parashu means uh, axe. We know parashuram. That ram who used an axe is called parashuram. Hmm? Parashu is one axe. But when we use Bahuvachan Prayog, which means plural usage, with the help or by the use of many axes, then Parushubihi. Like Sadhu becomes Sadhubihi. So similarly, Parashu becomes Parushubihi. So Kalevaram, the body of Putana, was cut with axes by many Brajbasis. Actually, this can be interpreted in two ways. One is, each Brijbasi had multiple axes. In case if the body is not cut by one axe, they would have another sharper one. So they would have many axes per person. And at the same time, there were many Brijbasis. So they all had their own axe. So uh, many Brijbasis having one one axe, that's multiple usage of axes. Or each Brijbasi having multiple axes. So in this way, many axes were used to cut the body of poop. And what did they do? Tat to that Tat Kalevaram. The word Tat refers to Kalevaram, that body. What did they do? Uh, kshiptva, Dure Kshiptva. Aya Vashrava, which means all the different parts of the body. Avaya Vashrava. All the different parts of the body were cut and Dure, far away Kshiptva, it was thrown. And then after it was thrown, thrown it was covered by wood, kashta veshtitam. In some parallel readings of the Bhagavatam, it is also written as kashta dhishtitam, which means placed on wood. Either covered by wood or the pieces were placed on wood. And near dahan. Dahan, we know dahan, which means to set it on fire. So near dahan, past tense usage. It was set on fire. burned down. So we can translate this as the body of Putana, Kalevaram, Tat Kalevaram, that body of Putana. Te uh, Vrajaukasaha, all the residents, what did they do? Parushubhish Chitva, having cut the body into pieces with axes, Dure Kshiptva, they threw it far away, piece by piece, and Kashta Veshtitam, they covered it by wood, wherever it was, or placed it on wood, and Nyadahan, set it on fire. Next verse. Text 34. Daihyamanasya dhumascha guru saurabha uttita krishna nirbhukta sapadhyahata pahmanaha. Translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Because of Krishna, having accepted the Rakshasi Putana, when Krishna killed her, she was immediately freed of all material contamination. 
her sinful reactions automatically vanished. And therefore, when her gigantic body was being burnt, the smoke em emanating from her body was fragrant like a guru incense. This is fascinating, dear devotees. And of course, Srila Prabhupada will now um, shoot his arrow in the purport. <laughs> this is so amazing. This purport is so beautiful, like every other purport. Prabhupada just needs one trigger <laughs> and then he will explain the glorious position of bhakti in the purport Srila Prabhupada explains such are the effects of Krishna consciousness if one somehow or other becomes Krishna conscious by applying his senses in the service of the Lord one one will immediately be freed from material contamination dear devotees let's read this again if one somehow or other becomes Krishna conscious by applying his senses in the service of the Lord one is Immediately freed from material contamination. Srila Prabhupada quotes Shrunvatam Swakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanaha. Canto 1, Chapter 2, Text 17, Bhagavatam. Hearing about the activities of Krishna is the beginning of purified life. Punya Shravana Kirtanaha. Punya means purifying. Shravana Kirtanaha. The process of hearing and chanting about Krishna is all pure. And the more we touch this process of hearing and chanting about Krishna, the purer we get. No doubt about it. Therefore, um, so simply by hearing and chanting, one becomes purified. Srila Prabhupada continues, therefore, in discharging devotional service, Shravanam Kirtanam, hearing and chanting is most important. Then with purified senses, one begins to render service to the Lord. Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhakti Ruchyate. This is called Bhakti. When Putana was somehow or other directly or indirectly induced to render some service to the Lord by feeding him with her breast, she was immediately purified. So much so that when her nasty material body was burned to ashes, it gave off the fragrance of a guru, the most agreeable scented herb. So let's see the words back in the verse. Daihyamanasya dehasya. Daihyamana means that which was being burned to ashes. Daihyamanasya dehasya. Deha means body. So that body of Putana which was being burnt, what happened? Dhuma, we know the word dhuma means smoke, even in Hindi and Marathi, dhuma means smoke. So what happened to that dhuma? Cha, a guru saurabha, the word saurabha means uh, fragrance, so, saurabhya in Sanskrit, saurabha, many boys also have their name, saurabh, <laughs> comes from this word, saurabha, which means fragrance, scent, aroma. What aroma? A guru. A guru is a special fragrance in some places. It's also compared to musk, kasturi. But mostly it's compared to the incense fragrance that we get in our present generation. So, daihyamanasya dehasya, from the body of Putana, which was being burned to ashes, dhumaha, the smoke that came in, aguru saurabaha, uh, which had the fragrance of aguru. And as a result, what happened? This fragrance. Mm. Mm. was rising uttita <laughs> krishna nirbhuktaha because the body was completely accepted by krishna so the word nirbhukta bhukta comes from the word bhog acceptance so because krishna had accepted accepted what putana her sin her contamination her reactions her offenses everything was taken away in fact, the whole of Putana was offered to Krishna. Because Krishna completely accepted Putana, then the smoke, the saurabha, that uttita, that rose, what happened? Uh, that was most fragrance. That, that smoke that came in was most fragrant. And this is because sapadi ahata papmanaha. Sapadi at once, ahata to destroy and papmana. All the sins, all the sinful tendencies in the body ahata, were destroyed. Because it was completely destroyed, uh, the fragrance that came from the burning body, the smoke that came from the burning body, uh, had the fragrance, the aroma of a guru. So let's see. Uh, did we read? The, we read the purport also. Yes. Where Prabhupada spoke about Shravanam and Kirtana. Yes. So now let's see the, the commentaries of our Acharyas in this regard. Um, in text 33, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur comments. Um, 
he says that uh, <clears throat> the residents of Braja, they were Nisheshena um, Dehuhu, um, which means they were again and again burning the parts of the body. Like they would set one part of Putana's body on fire and others would come and add more fuel to make sure that it's actually burning. Because Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur said that uh, uh, the poison bearing life forms can only be terminated by burning. <laughs> and Srila Prabhupada in the purport talks about snake and that's coming from Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur's purport. This is how we see Srila Prabhupada's purports are complete and perfect coming from our Acharyas. See, Prabhupada is so kind that without quoting the direct Sanskrit, he just translates it into English. So um, we don't have to go through the ordeal of personally translating. Prabhupada does it and gives it to us. So Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says that those animals which have poison in them, uh, when uh, they are uh, when they are dead, there is a fear sometimes <laughs> that they may even come back to life by the touch of air. So therefore they are... Um, Terminated by repeated burning. Different parts of the bodies are cut and burned. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says. Now the question could be who's burning it? <laughs> because Nanda Maharaj and all the gopas are coming from Mathura. Right? And the gopis headed by Mother Yashoda are busy. Gomutrena Snapayitva Punar Gora Arbakam taking care of baby Gopal and putting him to sleep. And Payitva Stanam Mata. Tanya Veshayadatmajam. She has given her breast milk. And patted Krishna to sleep. Krishna's resting now. <laughs> He's fast asleep. So who is the one who's setting Putana's body on fire? Is the question Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur is asking and answering. He says that uh, those who are of the lower caste, whose uh, natural service was Anteshti Kriya, to perform last rites and to cre cremate bodies. They were doing the service, but who was heading it? Upananda, Upananda Maharaj. Upananda Maharaj is the uh, younger brother of Nanda Maharaj. So Nanda, Upananda, Abhinanda, Sunanda, they're all brothers. So in the absence of Nanda Maharaj, it is described Upananda Maharaj was heading it. And he said, till the time Nanda Maharaj comes back as the king, I will take care. And he ordered those whose service by caste and by birth and by inclination was to set bodies on fire. They were given this instruction. Srila Vishwana Chakravati Thakur says, now, Srila Baladev Vidya Bhushan, um, please forgive me, Srila Jiva Goswami, um, he explains that most Brajbasis were standing at a distance and watching what was happening. But only few Brajbasis uh, who had taken up the service um, to set bodies on fire, only they were going ahead because there was a fear that Putana may come back to life again. Or what if she's just unconscious? So those who were really brave in protecting Braja, they were the ones. Others were all standing behind and just watching at what was happening. And their attention more was on, oh, is Krishna safe? Did he wake up? Uh, is he having bad dreams because of what he went through? Because a six-day-old six child goes through something like this. It's unheard of, even in human society. Imagine some society that we are into and a six-day-old child uh, even has like a ghost toy. You know, that's a bad impression on the child. You know, the child better not come for Halloween huh? where houses are filled with ghosts and uh, pumpkins all over. <laughs> In America, it's, a, it's considered to be a big festival. I don't understand why, but generally festivals are supposed to bring out the best in us. But uh, during the time of Diwali, you'll find all homes are decorated with ghosts. Uh, and, and unfortunately, that tradition is being imitated even in India with skeletons all over the place and skulls outside the homes. I saw one home. It even had uh, like uh, owl and bat and all tamasic birds. You know, of course, person had put in so much hard work. I was in uh, in 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 one city and outside the home where I was put put up uh, just opposite. That person had used his whole garden for Halloween celebration. And he had like about uh, 75 skeletons of different, he had decorated, he had done Shringar Seva for all those skeletons. And, uh, and 
another devotee joked and he said it was during pitru paksha so he didn't he didn't even have to offer it there he could have just offered it to the uh, you know front yard or backyard because with seven generations he's living, <laughs> living there and it's and then the host was telling me people from far distance they come to take pictures of this man's creativity and he will have like a ship and a pirate skeleton with eye one eye shut and he will have different varieties of um tamasic decorations uh, even the house is sealed one of the doors is sealed and from one of those doors from inside you can even hear like the growling of a cat not a real one just like music fake music just to give that feel so anyway uh, <laughs> imagine 6 day old krishna going through a, a traumatic experience of having a full grown yatudhana you know rakshasi balaghazini ghora who's coming as a mother whom krishna thought was a mother but appears to be 12 miles long it's, it's a very bad impression for the child but krishna can digest anything you know <laughs> he has a very good digestive ability he can throw in some mud in his mouth and transform it into a universe in no time that's krishna's digestive ability <laughs> right our bodies are only stool and urine making machines you can throw in anything you want and the body is so nasty that it only creates garbage but krishna's transcendental body is so amazing that he can just put mud in his mouth and then open his mouth and show universes that's the power of his digestion so krishna can digest the greatest of putanas no problem but the brijbasis don't know his bhagavatta they don't know his godly nature so most brijbasis are praying for krishna and even coming and checking again and again to nanda bhavan to see i hope krishna is still asleep i hope he is not getting up with some fright sometimes it happens with us bad dreams and we are sweating and we we get up sometimes it's like we are falling from a cliff or sometimes some animal is chasing us or sometimes some you know some bad dreams and these are impressions from past lives impressions from past life someone who um, has some bad past with fire with drowning in water from height etc that impression of death in the past lives troubles the living entity in the form of dreams repeatedly so then what to speak of we on purpose sitting in front of ghostly horror movies what bad impression is the consciousness going through and so we want to make sure as prabhupada explains in the purport that we put our consciousness through the best experience possible so the brajbasis are called gopa or gopi because they hide krishna <laughs> they 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 protect krishna uh, gopa like coming from the root gup gopaniya to keep something gupta so they can hide the gopis can hide their love for krishna from the world and the gopas they can hide krishna from everyone else so if in case of danger they are ready to hide krishna and protect krishna uh, even the peacocks in braja are like that they will all open their feathers looking at the rain cloud called krishna and they will come around krishna and they will start dancing because they think it's the time for rain because krishna is a rain cloud there are many rain clouds in the sky but fortunately one rain cloud has fallen to the ground so all the peacocks try to catch that rain cloud <laughs> and they go around circum- circumambulating they do parikrama of this rain cloud and because they open up their feathers and they are uh, keeping krishna to themselves therefore krishna is hidden other species can see krishna so therefore they have to climb giriraj govardhan and the birds have to see from the top to see if they are able to see their krishna so this is gokul this is the planet this is the place this is the family where everyone keeps krishna hidden and protected from everyone else <laughs> so even the peacocks are hiding krishna by opening up their feathers and keeping chamsundar only for themselves so the point here coming to the point is shila jeeva goswami pad says only a few residents went ahead uh, to do this service rest all were praying to narayana for the safety of krishna <laughs> and also uh, offering their blessings to baby krishna shila jeeva goswami pat says the word nyatahan can be opened up in sanskrit as nitaram adahan adahan means to burn and nitaram means continuously so the body of putana was burning for a long time hmm? it was burning for a long time it is described that uh, um 
fire only burns those who are sinful fire only burns those who are sinful this is why mother sita was asked to go through agni pariksha to see if there was any sin and the fact that she came out uh, or the fact that she was completely uh, sinless is seen from the fact that nothing happened fire uh, fire actually offered obeisances to the lotus feet of mother sita and as we know in the story of the ramayan there were two sitas one was the true sita and the second was maya sita hmm? or she was the chaya sita the shadow sita and um, the actual sita it's described when ravana uh, came to kidnap mother sita the actual sita was hidden into fire agni dev protected her and through a uh, illusory form a chaya a shadow form uh, an illusion form of sita and that's the sita that ravana kidnapped and she performed all her past times and then later during the agni pariksha she entered into fire and the actual sita came out <laughs> so in this way mother sita went back to shri ram and uh, illusory sita went back into fire but mother sita's heart is so kind she told shri ramachandra that i was throughout rama and protected by fire but it was maya sita who had to go through the trouble of being in ashok vatika so she suffered for one whole year so mother sita tell, told shri ramachandra it is my desire that this sita this maya sita she should also get the position of sita uh, the illusory sita should also get the position of being your wife therefore shri ramachandra agreed he said in this life it is not possible in this incarnation i have ek patni vrata i accept only one wife but in my next incarnation when i come as venkateshwar swami shrinivas govinda of andhra pradesh of tirupati then i will accept padmavati on one side and ah uh, yes who is the other one we will we will um, um let the devotees chat let's open up the chat window so that they will all be able to write their answers chalo time for quiz hmm so two who are the two queens of venkateshwara some say shri devi bhu devi some are saying vedavati huh some are saying bhargavi oh yes the right answer is lakshmi and padmavati <laughs> mother sita is lakshmi and vedavati who is the chaya sita she appeared as padmavati and this is why padmavati devi's marriage to shrinivasa is popular because it was lakshmi devi as mother sita uh, who thank you everyone thank you for active participation thank you wonderful so this is why we see the story is so fascinating that um, i will mention really quick we find the story of how bhrigu muni comes to vaikuntha and he wants to find whether it's brahma vishnu or shiva who is the greatest and finally he comes to vaikuntha and he kicks the chest of mahavishnu and he thought mahavishnu would be enraged enraged by this <laughs> but mahavishnu on the other hand starts massaging the lotus feet of bhrigu muni and says oh you are a brahmana your lotus feet is very soft i am very hard hearted <laughs> therefore your lotus feet may hurt so vishnu starts massaging seeing this bhrigu muni's heart melts and he announces that the supreme lord is narayana himself so narayana has been announced as the supreme lord by bhrigu and he has no problem bhrigu muni has no problem narad muni has no problem but lakshmi has a big problem lakshmi devi has a problem that in my abode some brahmana comes and kicks the chest of my husband i am not going to tolerate this so she leaves vaikuntha and she comes to kolapur in maharashtra mahalakshmi and she performs tapasya to make sure that there is justice she says that vaikuntha has been contaminated by this activity therefore uh, austerity must be performed this is why lakshmi leaves vaikuntha and comes to kolapur in maharashtra and there is a very very big famous mahalakshmi mandir there this is the history now searching for lakshmi devi vishnu comes down as shrinivasa and he goes all over the place searching for lakshmi devi and when he can't find lakshmi 
it is described Srinivas sits in meditation. Because Lakshmi is in man, she's in a sulking anger mood. So Srinivasa, in his human-like pastime, he doesn't know where she is. <laughs> so he sits to meditate. He sits to meditate to find her. And long story short, the story continues. And finally, it's described that Lakshmi is performing tapasya here. But Srinivasa falls in love with a very beautiful girl by the name Padmavati. <laughs> and the history is also very, very, uh, it's, it's fantastic. That as Srinivasa is sitting in meditation, an ant hill is formed over his body because he, without food and without water and without any shelter and without any sleep, he is performing tapasya, Srinivasa, only to get Lakshmi Devi. But now it so happens that as he's performing tapasya, he's Govinda, he's Gopal himself. So when he's hungry, who will give him milk? The cows must go and give him milk. <laughs> So what happens is he's sitting under the anthill and he's uh, performing tapas. Is my voice clear and loud? Okay. Because I am seeing that uh, the videos are stuck for most. So I'm not sure if it's internet problem from my side. Um, and if I'm not sure if the audio is going through properly. Maybe Jay Kumar Prabhu, you can kindly confirm if if the video is okay. Video is okay. There was a glitch in the audio sometime, but I think we are good now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Srinivasa is sitting under the anthill and he's performing tapasya. And when he's hungry, he needs to drink something. So the cows are coming and pouring their milk because it's the Lord of their life who's hungry. <laughs> it so happens that the cowherd community, the shepherds and the cowherds who are taking care of the cow, they're asked by the king and the queen, what happened to the milk? He says, I don't know. They go into the forest and they have full milk. And when they come back, they don't give any milk. <laughs> so one fine day, it is described that the, the queen gave an ultimatum to the shepherds that if you, the cowherds, if you don't give milk today through the cows, then you see what I will do. I will give you punishment. So the cowherds, they don't know how to find the cows. So they go behind the cows and they see all the cows go there on top of that hill where Govinda is performing, Srinivasa Govinda is performing tapasya, under which he's performing tapasya. So they go and they pour their milk like rain shower inside and he's sitting inside and drinking that milk so when the the cowherds they observe this they go back to the king and they mention actually the the cows are going and pouring their milk aimlessly on top of a mountain because they don't know that there's someone sitting under the mountain uh, so then the king comes there and finding um, oh, before that, it's described, the, the king says that, oh, then you should kill such cows. The cows who are not giving milk to the king, they must be killed. So following the instruction of the king, the cowherd, they go and they take a, an axe, parushubi, and they throw at a cow which is uh, giving milk. And it so happens, just like the cow is giving milk for Gopal, to protect the cow, Srinivas jumps out of the anthill. He jumps out of the anthill and it so happens that the axe hits him. The axe hits the Supreme Lord and he protects the cows. To protect the cow, he's ready to take the beating on himself. <laughs> and blood is oozing from his head. Now seeing this, uh, Srinivasa gets angry. He said, you cowherd, how dare you use your axe to kill a cow? Now I jumped out to protect the cow, otherwise the cows would have been dead. So the cowherd said, well, we were just following the king. <laughs> we don't know what's happening to us. We are just following the instruction of the king. So Srinivasa says, okay, then the sin comes to the king. I curse your king, then may he become a ghost. So by the curse of Srinivas Govinda, the king is cursed to become a ghost. But by then the king Akash Raj, he comes running and he says, my lord, please don't curse me. I was simply trying to get that milk to offer to your deity. I didn't know it's you sitting under the anthill. <laughs> Please forgive me. Please have some mercy on me. So Srinivasa said, okay, no problem. You have this sin that you have of gohatya. Therefore, may you become a ghost. But very soon after that, you will become a king when you come out of that ghost body and you will have a daughter called Padmavati and I myself will win her hand in marriage and I will get married to her. <laughs> so then after he performs the service of being the ghost next life 
he becomes the father of Padmavati Devi. And it's described Srinivasa falls in love with Padmavati. But the problem is, Padmavati is the daughter of the great king. So therefore, she's a princess. And Srinivasa just comes down <laughs> from nowhere. So he's not a king. He comes searching for Lakshmi. But performing his pastime with Padmavati, he forgets Lakshmi, who is performing Tapasya at Kolapur. So now it's described Srinivasa doesn't have enough money to match up with the status of Padmavati. So Srinivasa takes a very big loan from Kuber. And he tells Kuber that I will return it back to you. So now Srinivasa has a very big bank balance, very hefty bank balance, because he has taken it from the treasurer, Kubera himself. But Mahavati Devi gets married to Srinivasa. But after marriage, she gets to know that this money is not his. <laughs> so then what happens? She leaves him and she says, I will come back to you only when you give all this money back to Kuber and you earn enough money of your own. <laughs> so Srinivasa Govinda says, well, I need help from my devotees to repay back to Kuber. And this is why, dear devotees, devotees go to Tirupati and offer wealth. And that is the richest temple in the world. Helping the Supreme Lord get his wealth back so that he can give, give it back to <laughs> Kuber so that the Lord can become rich and Padmavati can come back to him. This is why you have Tirumala and Tirupati. You see the Lord and Padmavati Devi living separately. So now we have to go and pour in more money so that the debt is paid off and they can come back together. So this is the history. Now the point why we mentioned this whole story is because Padmavati Devi is the incarnation of Vedavati, who is that Maya Sita. Lakshmi Devi is Sita. And the Maya Sita, the illusory form of Sita who performed the whole pastime of Ramayana, by the mercy of Sita, became Padmavati. So this is why Srinivasa on one side has Lakshmi and on the other side has Padmavati. One represents Sita Devi and one represents the Maya Sita in Ramayana. <laughs> Isn't it fascinating how the pastimes of the Lord are all connected and so wonderfully connected? I did not even in my rarest dream decide and plan that today I will speak about Venkateshwara. But, Yare yaiche na chai te taiche kare nrutya. Ekale Ishwara Krishna Arasava Bhritti. I was in the middle of some commentary of Srila Jiva Goswami. And um, somehow Krishna, he took my tongue and he said, now I will drag you through Tirupati. <laughs> and you will start glorifying my glories in Tirupati. Uh, so, Venkateshwara Srinivasa Govinda Ki. Yeah. So we were mentioning, back to Putana, we were mentioning that fire burns only that which is sinful. That which is sinless is not burnt by fire. Fire cannot burn it. So next time when we, for us, forget about fire. You see the lamp where that fire is kept during the Mangalarati. If you have to carry that lamp also, it gets hot and it's difficult to carry it even at the base. So we should pray to Krishna. I am very sinful. This is why fire is burning me. <laughs> but if someone is sinless, like Mother Sita, then fire will only touch the lotus feet and get purified. So because Putana's body had become purified by the touch of Krishna's lips, fire was not burning. <laughs> Therefore, nyadahan, nitaram, uh, nitaram adahan, that it took a long, long time for the body to burn. They were adding more fuel. They were thinking it's because of the sin. But actually, Putana's body had become completely transcendental. By the touch of Krishna's lips. <laughs> this is the proof, dear devotees, that uh, Mahaprasadam is transcendental. Because Putana, before she came, she was Bhoga. But once touched by Krishna, she became Prasad. And there was a Guru Saurabha. That which is touched by Krishna's lips has the fragrance of a Guru. So next time we see fragrance of Prasad. Please tell yourself, oh, this is the transcendental nature of Bhagavat Mahaprasad. <laughs> Anything that is touched by Krishna's lips becomes transcendental. So this is Srila Jiva Goswami's uh, commentary. Now Srila Sanatvan Goswami Pad writes. Um, yes, he has also said the same thing. Srila Sanatvan Goswami Pad says, Nisheshena adahan, 
uh, or Nitarama Dahan, that the body was continuously burnt, um, constantly burnt by the residents of Braja. Now in text 34, let's see what the Acharyas have written. Srila Sridhar Swami, now this is with respect to the smoke Uttita, Krishna Nirbhukta, the, the, the smoke that came from the body of Putana had the fragrance of a guru. So our Acharyas have started commenting on that. Srila Sridhar Swami in his Bhavartha Tipika commentary, he writes, um, look at this wonderful thing. <laughs> what wonder? This pastime has one wonder after another. The first wonder is, um, here is an owl coming uh, by the wings, flying from Mathura to Gokul. And at night on a Saturday, on the sixth day, she appears. And she becomes a very beautiful woman. This is the first wonder. Next, instead of going to any other home, she's attracted straight to Krishna's home. That is another wonder. Third, when she enters, Mother Yashoda and Mother Rohini, they think that she should come to Krishna. Instead of trying to stop her, they're encouraging her because um, her body, her expressions, her words, everything was so pleasing and motherly. Mother Yashoda was thinking, if she feeds her milk, the affection from her heart in the form of milk, then Krishna will become rushed pushed. He will become very healthy. <laughs> Another wonder is, yeah. he who is Ananta, unlimited, was taken on the lap which is limited. <laughs> then it is described. Another wonder is, Krishna's eyes, like Jagannath, who don't even have eyelids. He's always watching everything. But that Lord, he closed his eyes and didn't watch what was happening. He who is Animesh, Animesh means that Lord who doesn't have eyelids. He closed both his eyelids. That's another wonder. And then another wonder is that Putana wanted to give poison of her body and Krishna accepted the poison of her body, the milk of her body, the life air and the poison of all her sins. Krishna told Putana, you came to give poison, right? Then why are you just giving me poison of your body? Give me the poison of your mind. Give me the poison of your heart. I am desiring to drink the Kama, Kro, the Loba, Mohammed, Matsarya. I am wanting to drink the poison of your hypocrisy. I want to drink the poison of all your anarthas. I want to drink the poison of repeated birth and death. I want to drink the poison of all your sins. Putana, I have come. Only in this world, Prithvi Bhara Nashwa Mukundaha, to reduce the burden of Mother Earth, I will start with you. <laughs> I will start by reducing your burden first. The burden that you're carrying in your heart of so many anarthas and offenses and sinful reactions, I will reduce that burden by drinking all the poison. This is another wonder. Then another wonder is little small child is only drinking milk and suddenly Putana becomes so big and crashes through all the trees and that too in Kamsa's garden. And nowhere else. <laughs> Another wonder is the child never got scared. Kridantam akuto bhayam. He is fearlessly. Bhaja hure mana shri nanda nandana abhaya charana aravindare. Those who worship him become fearless. Abhayam sattva sam shuddhi jnana yoga vyavastiti. Danam damascha yajnascha swadhyaya stapa arjavam. Krishna has said, those who worship me will become fearless. Then what you speak of Krishna? He is the embodiment of fearlessness. Kridantam akuto bhayam, without any bhaya, he is playing on the chest of Putana. <laughs> and then another wonder is, um, Krishna has, he felt hungry and sleepy. He drank Mother Yashoda's breast milk and he has gone to sleep. And the wonder here is her body, which is so big, mm -hmm. is cut to pieces and it's not burning. It's burning in a long, long time. And Sridhar Swami says, the last the last wonder in this pastime is when it is burnt. Chaguru Saurabham. Dhumash Chaguru Saurabham. The smoke is very fragrant. And he explains, Krishnena nirbhukta atayeva sapadi ahata papma yasya. That because her body was completely consumed by Krishna, all the sins were taken. She had become sinless. And at once she became all pure. Dear devotees, this point is to be noted. That anyone who comes in contact with Krishna will become purified. Absolutely purified. Think about the hippies. They drank liquor. When they started chanting Hare Krishna, they even gave up drinking of tea and coffee. Think of those who ate cow flesh. They gave up the eating of onion and garlic. <laughs> those who slept all day, 
would wake up for Mangal Aruti. Those who didn't wear clothes at all were we wearing dhoti kurta and sari. Those who had long copper hair that they so long that they could sit on it, they had shaved head and shika, and they were shaving for others also. Janma sarthaka kari karaparu upakar. Shave for yourself and shave for others. <laughs> By shaving, they were saving, because in uh, in Bengali you, you don't say sir, you say sha. Sure. So they were not saving, they were shaving. <laughs> they were shaving others to save them from repeated births and death. This is the power of bhakti. This is why when someone would come to Srila Prabhupada and say that, Swamiji, show us some magic, Prabhupada would say, they are all my magic. They started off as hippies, now they've become happies. Prabhupada would say, look at the effulgence in their face. They look like men from Vaikuntha. Because this is the power of bhakti. Sapadi, little touch with bhakti, the person becomes purified. In the Puranas, it is described, and it is a very famous story for Kartik Mahatmya. It is described that <clears throat> one time in one temple, the pujari was offering lamp. And there used to be a rat, a little mouse, which was very interested in, very eager and hungry to eat the ghee uh, that is used in the wick in the lamp. The sweet ghee is very pleasing to the mouth of the mouse. So every day after the arati is performed and the fire would go extinguished, the mouse would come and you know, start eating the Bhagavad Prasad in the form of the ghee. <laughs> One day it so happened that the pujari offered the lamp and kept it down and the mouse thought that the fire was out, was extinguished. And then it came and started eating the ghee out of that wick. What happened? The whole mouth was filled with ghee now. And by its friction and action, somehow the wick caught fire. And when the wick caught fire, the mouth was full of ghee. So the mouth of the <laughs> mouse, unfortunately, started burning. This is, this is a proof to us that uh, we should at least wait for the arati to get over to, before we pop in some Mahaprasad. <laughs> at least we should wait, make sure that the arati is over. Not that we come offer obeisances and like me start eating. I am like that. Even if the arati is going on, I offer obeisance and I start eating. Because my uh, my eating propensity are vrukodhara. I eat a lot. Like Bhimsen. <laughs> eating like Bhimsen and sleeping like Kumbhakarn. Ramayana and Mahabharata. This is the lesson I have learned. Hmm. So anyway. So this mouse, this little rat... It started uh, chewing into the <laughs> ghee. And because of the friction of its whiskers, the wick caught fire. And because the mouth was full of ghee, the mouth was now on fire. And the, mouth was in, the mouse was in extreme pain. And he started jumping in pain. Uh, started jumping in pain. Now, as it was jumping and flipping in pain, um, it, it suffered for some time. And then it's le it left its body in front of the deity. Now, next life. It's described that this mouse became a queen. It became a queen. Why? Because it is one service, according to Shastra, to dance in front of the deity. <laughs> so this mouse, at the time of death, because of fire in the mouth, was jumping and dancing in front of the deity during the arati. And not just that, because the mouth was on fire, he was moving all over the place. So he also got the benefit of offering ghee by accidental offering of ghee lamp and accidental dancing in the arati, the mouse became a queen. And what was the service of the queen? Lifelong vrat was to offer ghee lamps to the Supreme Lord. And by that lifelong dedicated service, that queen went back home, back to God. So it is described, even accidental touch in the Bhakti Sandarbha, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad has described, even accidental touch with the limbs of Bhakti gives so much benefit. Putana did not desire to serve Krishna and still her body was fragrant. Think about the purification our body can go through. Never ever worry about the lust and anger and greed and pride and envy that we have in our heart. It is no longer our headache. We raise our hands and we surrender to Krishna. Krishna, my duty is to serve you. Your duty is to clean my heart. I am not going to worry about how lusty I am, how greedy I am, how envious I am. If I'm thinking about my anarthas, I am not thinking about Krishna at that moment. 
I should trust Krishna's compassion on me more than the power of my anarthas. When the anarthas impel, when they push, yes, I should not act on them. When lust is pushing, I will not act. When anger is pushing, I will not act. But I will not talk about it. I will not go and tell people I am so lusty, I am so envious, I am so greedy. No. Just like we say, don't go and tell Krishna how big your problems are. Go and tell your problems how big Krishna is. No. So we don't have to worry about ourselves. Yes, I may be dirty. I may be contaminated. I may be sinful. I may be offensive. But doesn't matter because I am like a child. I am like a child smeared with uh, stool and urine. But I am sitting on the lap of my mother. My duty is to cry to the mother and embrace my mother. And my mother's duty is to clean after me. And bathe me and make me look very cute as a baby. <laughs> so all of us, we may be having the anarthas, but we don't have to worry. We surrender to Krishna with our anarthas. My Lord, I am yours. Sakrideva prapanno yastavasmiti sayachate avayam sarvadatasmai dadami etad bratam mama. Sri Ramachandra has said, once somebody says, oh Sri Ramachandra, I am yours. Bas, I will take care of them. In the Hari Bhakti Vilas, it is described, Krishna, Tavai Vasmi. Krishna, I only belong to you. If someone says this, then Krishna will protect them. Once, if they say, huh? once if we close our eyes and say, Oh, Krishna, I am yours. Bas, now this will save us. In the Mukundamala Stotra, it is described, Alam 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 eka praninam patakanam nirasana bishayaya Krishna Krishna tivani. Yadi Bhavati Mukunde Bhakti Rananda Sandra. It is described. Don't ever tell how sinful you are. Bas, enough. Just chant the holy name of Krishna. Instead of speaking about your faults, speak about the glories of the Lord. When Surdas Ji, Netrahin Surdas would write, I am so sinful, I am so contaminated, I am so crooked, I am so lusty. Sri Padvallavhachari Ji read and he said, This is the last time you're writing something like this. From now, you just describe the leelas of Krishna. Don't worry about yourself. Dhunoti sarvam ridhisanyavishta. You hear about Krishna. You chant about Krishna. You remember Krishna. And leave it to Krishna to clean our heart. So we all should not worry. Yes, we should not act on them. We should not feed the bad dog inside us. We have the good dog of chanting, hearing, reading. We want to feed that. The goodness. The humility, the tolerance, the forgiveness. And we have the bad dog of lust, anger, greed, pride, envy, etc. Don't feed it. When situations come, don't, you know, don't give in. But at the same time, don't worry about them. Krishna will clean. Just like he did for Putana. Putana didn't worry. She just, her only headache was how to go to Krishna, how to find him. That's all. That should be our only thought process. Our only headache in life should be, alas, alas, my days and nights are passing. When, when or oh, when will I find Krishna? That's the only thing to remember. Smartavyam satatam vishnu vismartavyam na jatu chit sarva vidhi nisheda siur eta yore vakinkaraha. If we only think about Krishna, if we only think about Krishna, only chant about Krishna, only read about Krishna, only hear about Krishna, why worry? My Lord, I am yours. However I may be, I may be the most biggest badmash, but no problem, I am yours. I surrender to you wholeheartedly. Whatever is mine, manasa deha geha joki chumor, arpilo tuvapade nanda kishor. Oh, son of Nanda Maharaj, I am yours. You do whatever you want with me. Maro bi rakho bi jo ichha tuhar, nitya dasa prati tuva adhikar. Oh, you want to purify me? You purify me. You want to make me contaminated? You make me more contaminated. Rupa Goswami Pad has prayed, stu yate chatakena. I am a chataka, my lord, and you are a rain cloud. Rere chata kasavatana manasa mitra chanam shru yatang amboda bahavo hisanti gagane sarve pinaita drisha kechi drishti virarth rayanti vasudam garjanti kechi drita yam yam pashasi tasya tasya purato ma bruhi dinam bacha. Rupa Goswami has said, Stuya te chata kena. That I am like a chataka, my lord, and you are like a rain cloud. My only duty is to cry for you. You can throw your thunderbolt of punishment on me or throw your rain shower of mercy. No problem. You have two options. I have only one. You can either throw thunderbolt and lightning on me, uh, thundering and lightning by punishing me, 
or you can throw me the rain shower of your kripa, of your mercy. You can do what you want with me, but I am a chatak, I am your bird. And my only duty is to look up to you and sing your glories. Prahlad Maharaj has said to Nashingadev, I am not worried about myself. Prahlad Maharaj is telling Nashingadev, I don't worry about going back home back to God. Why? Nashingadev is asking. He says, because Tvadvirya Gayana Mahamrita Magna Chitta, I am busy floating and splashing and swimming and drowning in the ocean of your glories. You keep me in heaven or hell or earth or Golok Brindavan, wherever you want, wherever you take the cow, the cow will only give milk. <laughs> so I am like your cow. <laughs> wherever you take me, I will only give the milk of your glories. <laughs> But I am worried, Prahlad Maharaj said, for conditioned souls who are in this world, who have forgotten you and who are not glorifying you and who don't know what's coming up for them in their next birth. I am worried about them. Srila Prabhupada loved this verse so much. And in that mood of Prahlad Maharaj, Prabhupada circled the globe. That I have no problem worrying about myself because Prabhupada is sitting at Radha Damodar. He has no worry about himself. But his greatest compassionate pain in the heart like Prahlad Maharaj, what's going to happen to suffering mankind? So the point here is, Srila Sridhar Swami is mentioning this point, that one becomes completely sinless by any touch of bhakti. And because Putana was touched by Krishna's lips, she became completely purified. Completely purified. Therefore, it is described that, Om Pavitra Apavitrova Sarvavasta Gatopiva Yasmaret Kundari Kaksham Sarvahya Abhyantara whether someone is pure or impure, contaminated, uh, purified, putrefied, whatever situation they may be in, bodily contamination, mental contamination, if they only remember Krishna, yes, smaret pundari kaksham, just by remembering Krishna, sir, by here, the person becomes completely purified. So much more to say. We'll continue tomorrow, tomorrow in the second part of Putana becoming purified. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Gaur Premanande, Hari Hari Bo. Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, thank you very much, dear Ramana Prabhu, for such a wonderful katha with uh, different uh, explanations from Acharya's commentary. They are so meaningful, and because of you, we are able to hear this wonderful glory. So, thank you so much for sharing. A lot of instructions have come in, dear devotees. Yesterday was Shila Prabhupada, this appearance anniversary that we celebrated. So let us make sure that whatever we are hearing uh, in this entire series and also what we are reading from the Shastra is implemented, is executed. Because without doing that, it is not going to give any benefit. Because we'll hear, go and take race and go back into our world. But that's not going to help at all. Right? So if you think that we are, because I see a lot of inspiring comments on YouTube. And if I had opened uh, chat here, you would have also filled this chat box with so many wonderful comments. But uh, if we are typing all those things, then let's implement those in our life. That is more important than putting words because words are good, but more important is action. So let's get into action, do some nice bhajan and make our Janma Sartha get to be mentioned. So thank you so much, dear devotees, for joining, giving your association regularly. And I would, I would like to pay our gratitude to his guest, Amrinda Prabhu, for such a wonderful katha. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. And tomorrow will be Q&A session. So we'll take uh, questions. There are a lot of questions that are coming. <laughs> We're trying to compile them and into groups and then we'll take them tomorrow. So please join in. Uh, a lot of doubts will get cleared. So I, I know that you know most of the time the Q&A session has got the highest participation online. So please send in your question to pariprashna108 at gmail.com. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Let's pay our gratitude to his guest, Samrana Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.
हरे कृष्णा धनवस का नाम हरे कृष्णा धनवस बॉय डॉग का पैरेसल वंडरफुल थिंग हरे कृष्णा धनवस का नाम अच्छे धनवस के हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी 